in Baltimore, Maryland. It's America East Conference men's basketball on ESPN3. Today, it's the Nickel State Colonels against the UMBC Retrievers. And a very happy day after. Gary Stein with you. Thanks for spending some time with us on this Thanksgiving weekend. John Feinstein, my partner, will hear from Paul Mittermeier in a moment. This is the championship of the Battle for Atlantis mainland, UMBC and Nickel State. UMBC gets here by victory over Chicago State. Presbyterian was a loser yesterday to Nickel State. And John, it's an interesting battle of guards in this game. For UMBC, the headliner is the 20-point scorer, Jarris Lyles. Always Jarris Lyles is the leader for UMBC. And had a solid game yesterday. That was one of the few times he finished well at the rim, actually. He's a little banged up, left hip injury that was uh, hurt again yesterday. But they're going to need a very big game out of Jarris Lyles at both ends of the court today. And for Nichols State, almost a mirror image of Jarris Lyles is a name that's very familiar to Maryland fans. No question about it. And that's why they're going to need a big game from Jarris Lyles, because he's going to have to guard Roddy Peters a lot of the afternoon. And look at Roddy Peters' numbers. Nearly had a triple-double uh, yesterday, averaging almost 23 points a game. Also a fifth-year senior at his third school, like Jarris Lyles. Starting lineups for UMBC first. We talk a lot about Jarris and Arkel Lamar for scoring. But the distributor, the facilitator, is Jordan Grant. Well, Jordan Grant started the first three games of the season because K.J. Mora was out, but he's played so well that Ryan Odom has kept him in the lineup and is bringing K.J. Mora off the bench. For Nickel State, not only do they have Peters in the backcourt, but uh, uh, Tavon Sadler gives them some size as well. Another big guy, six foot six, playing guard, another transfer, another senior. A lot of experience, a lot of size in that backcourt for Nickel State. A busy day for UMBC head coach Ryan Odom yesterday, even after the ball game was over. Yeah, they scouted the game, he and his coaching staff, and then went and looked at tape and got ready. And Dinner at the Odom's house didn't start till about 8 o'clock, and Ryan said, well, basketball rules in our family. Absolutely, as it does for Richie Riley in his second season at Nickel State. Yeah, yeah, Richie Riley came over from Clemson where he's an assistant, and he's got nine new players on this team. Seven of them are transfers. So, Gary, this is a new team, but it's also an old team. And we welcome our officials this afternoon, Rob Snedden, Matt Dorn, and Josh White. We are set to go here. The Retrievers in the gold with the black trim. Nickel State in the white and red trim. It'll be Legend Rubartan, a seven foot one center for the Colonels against Nolan Garrity for UNBC. And the Retrievers from left to right will start it off as the championship of the Battle for Mainland, uh, or Battle for Atlantis Mainland, begins here at the rack. And Garrity just got up quicker than Robertan. A nice backdoor cut by Max Curran to start the game. And that's good for Ryan Odom to see because Max Curran didn't play very much yesterday because of foul trouble. So it's nice for him to get off to a good start for UMBC. Max Curran, only 20 minutes played in his last two games, a shade under 20 per game in the first three. So yes, it is good to see him get started. Sophomore from Hooks at New Hampshire can complete the three-point play, and Sadler pulls it down for Nichols State. And the Retrievers are going to need to be better at the free throw line today than they were yesterday. Especially early in the game when they missed five of their first ten. The Colonels beat Presbyterian yesterday, 76-64. Rob Artan, the 7-1 center. You cannot let him catch the ball that close to the basket. Ryan Odom talked about that this morning because he's so huge. Once he gets it in there, seven foot one and 280, he's almost impossible to stop. From London, England. Transfer. Clemson. Yep, and, and where Richie Riley coached him and recruited him initially. Garrity can't catch it cleanly inside from Lyles. And here come the Colonels the other way. A drive to the hole by Peters. No call there. Outside, here's Sadler with a strong drive on the right side. Curran pulls it down. What a pace early here, John. Well, you're going to see this kind of pace most of the afternoon, Gary. Here's Jordan Grant with a pop from outside. 
That's the first three for UMBC, and they lead by three. And both teams are going to try to beat the other team down court whenever they can. One of the keys is going to be taking good shots, not necessarily quick shots. And there, UMBC got a good shot out of the corner from Jordan Grant. Both teams like to shoot the three. Both teams average in the top 25 in the country in attempts per game. And both teams will turn the ball over. The third member of our crew is Paul Mittermeyer, who's standing by at the UNBC bench. Paul? Well, thanks, Gary. You know, both Peters and Sadler coming home. Of course, Peters at Maryland from Suitland High School. Sadler, Aberdeen, then St. Francis. Now, Sadler came to Baltimore. They didn't think he was going to play because he had an ingrown toenail. They found an emergency doctor was able to perform surgery. Sadler played the whole game yesterday. We'll see how long he can play today. And they actually didn't know Gary until warm-ups yesterday that he was going to be able to play. And he told Richie Riley, Coach, I'm ready. I'm at home. I'm playing. <laughs> That's important, no doubt about it. Garrity with a strong left, but it's no good off rim and glass. And the rebound comes down to Nickel State. You know, Sadler's story is interesting, and a whistle away from the ball. It's on Nickel State. Just to finish the story on Sadler, he started his prep career at Aberdeen High School in Harford County, then moved down to the city to St. Francis, which is the same route that a probably the best athlete from Baltimore City to ever come, Tommy Polly, the former NFL player, also started at Aberdeen and then ended up at Dunbar High School in, in the city. There's Curran with a three-pointer from outside. The rebound comes down to Sadler. See, that was an example of what Ryan Odom was talking about. That was a quick shot. They didn't need the shot there, and he was well guarded. Curran should have passed the ball in that circumstance. Half court set here for Nickel State. 15 to shoot in the corner. Tough a shot floater. there. That is a tough shot, and up and in. Another transfer, Powell. Credit the basket to Javon Powell, the senior guard, six-footer. This is basically a junior and senior team for Nickel State. But as I said, most of them are playing their first year here. Lyles for Curran. Here's Grant, who has started all five games now for UMBC. He puts one up off the glass, a floater. The retriever's now by three. That's why Ryan Odom's kept him in the starting lineup, because he comes out firing. Jordan Grant has the hot hand early with five. Early zone defense for UMBC. Ryan Odom said they were going to play some zone against his team. I didn't think we'd see it this early. Kevin Johnson for three on the left side. The 5'10 freshman guard from Thibodeau, Louisiana, which is where the school is located. You won't say fre freshman very often today. Curran, strong move. Curran with the right hand. Nice pass by Grant. Nice cut by Curran. And again, the pace continues here early on at UMBC. This has the makings of a great one. I think the players can keep up the, this pace because both coaches will go to their benches. You and I could be another story. <laughs> Nickel State out of the Southland Conference. Automatic bid. Very Texas, good league. Texas A&M Corpus Christi in that conference. Nice strong move here by Sadler. And of course, UMBC losing to Texas A&M Corpus Christi last year in the CTI tournament. Also from that conference, Stephen F. Austin, a perennial NCAA tournament, and New Orleans, which is very good. Grant off the front rim. Rebound comes down to Peters. Peters and Sadler run the team. And Peters inside the lane offensive. I was going to say, that should be a charge because of the elbow that came up. And good call there. And a timeout on the floor. Media timeout. There's Jordan Grant with the hot hand early. Grant with five points, two assists. Back after this.
Respect is hard work. Respect is dedication. Respect is earned on the court or on the field. Respect doesn't judge based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Respect is being the first conference to partner with the You Can Play Project. And the first conference in the LGBT Sports Safe Founders Club. Respect coaches, players, and the game. Respect similarities. Respect differences. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Back at you from the Retrievers Activity Center on the campus of UMBC, the championship game of the Battle for Atlantis Mainland. Tied at nine, Nickel State and UMBC. Hot hand for UMBC early belongs to Jordan Grant, the senior guard out of Bowie, Maryland, prepped at Archbishop Spalding. Uh, against Chicago State yesterday, John, he played in his 100th career game for UMBC, and he's got 21 assists in his last three games. He's really taken back to that point guard spot. Well, and again, he, he He's had to because Jarris Lyles can handle the ball and run the team, but he's not a pure point guard and he plays his best ball off, off the ball. So when K.J. Moore is not in there, it's up to Jordan Grant a lot of the time to run the team. And as you said, he's really adapted back to it very well because last year, K.J. Moore had the ball in his hands 90% of the time. Jordan Grant, seven assists yesterday against Chicago State, had a career-high nine against Central Pennsylvania a couple games ago, and his assist-to-turnover ratio, 28 to 12, that's 2.3 to 1, one of the best in the America East Conference. Yeah, and by far the best on UMBC. Pressure here, I'm sorry. Pressure here. Jarris Lyles handling the ball now. Nickel State with the pressure. Here's Lyles in the front court for UMBC. Grant in the corner. Retrievers still go with their starting five. Ten to shoot here for the Retrievers. Here's a ball screen from Garrity. And uh, uh, Jarris is tied up underneath by Sadler. And it'll go over to Nickel State. A little surprise Ryan Odom hasn't subbed yet. He's going to right now. He's There's the tie-up. And Joe Sherburn and K.J. Moore are going to come in. Grant's going to come out. And Curran's going to come out. So usually Ryan goes to his bench right around the first TV timeout. Joe Sherburn, a big story yesterday, a season-high five three-pointers in nine attempts, 19 points against Chicago State. Of course, K.J. missed the first three games. Uh, suspension came back against Colgate, put up 14 points, had seven assists yesterday and one point. Yeah, Ryan was very pleased with the way he was patient and didn't force the shots when they weren't there and found teammates. That's why he had the seven assists. Now into the corner. Little floater, nice up and in by Kevin Johnson. And Johnson now with five. You remember the one of the last plays of the game when he pushed the ball ahead, when KJ pushed it ahead to Joe Rosario? Yeah. And Ryan was furious. He said, I know he's trying to get the kid a, a shot, but that wasn't the right time. Game was over, just dribble it out. Lyles for three. Rebound comes down to Kamani Jackson, a four-star recruit out of Flint, Michigan, a transfer from Colorado State. That and looked Kamani like it could Jackson. have been offensive goaltending. On the, uh, on the other end there, Jackson scores, and it's a four-point lead for Nickel State. And you see what Nickel State is doing. They're just taking the ball to the basket every time. And UMBC is going to have to convert better on defense, so they can't do that as often. Drewers may need to bring in Max Portman shortly. He had a big game against Chicago State. This is out of bounds off of Nickel State. Well, it's interesting because Ryan Odom sent Max Portman to the bench, to the uh, scores table, and then it looked like he wasn't going to come in, and now he will for Nolan Garrity. And he really gave UMBC a spark in the first half yesterday after they got off to a very slow start, trailing Chicago State 10 to 2. 14 minutes, eight points, and three rebounds. Block shot there. Doesn't really even tell the story of what Max Portman did yesterday. All the way to the hole is Sadler, can't finish. Portman the rebound for UMBC. The Colonel's on a mini 4-0 run here. Retrievers have not scored in the last 238. Can't afford to have lulls against this team. Lamar looked like he mishandled the basketball on the way to the hoop. And Nickel State bails him out with a foul. You're talking about a team that averages 95 points a game. And here you see Lamar kind of got away with a carry there, but gets to the bucket and gets fouled. First foul on Kamani Jackson. That's the fifth on Nichols. UMBC has yet to commit a foul here at the 1343 mark. Well, and what that means is that that can keep happening. They have got to shoot their free throws better. They did not shoot them shoot particularly well for much of the game yesterday, and they're off to another slow start today. Just 18 for 30, 60% yesterday. 
that ain't going to get it done. And missing both is Lamar. Meanwhile, Nickel State a 76% as a team free throw. Nice shooter. steal there by Lyles. Take it back, though. To the corner in the corner, and Nickel State makes it pay. That's Lafayette Rutledge. All of his shots have been from three points all season long. Well, that's why they made him pay, because Lyles had the steal, but then lost the ball. And there's another steal, except he went out of bounds. That was Javon Powell. Fortunately for UMBC. But Lyles went down, and so it was five on four, and Nickel State did a good job of finding the open man, Rutledge. The Colonel's on a 9-0 run. The Retrievers haven't scored in 3-0-1. Take a look at the steal and the steal back. Steal back, and then there's Rutledge open in the corner because Lyles is still trying to get up. Lafayette Rutledge now with 17 three-pointers on the season. He hasn't taken a shot inside the three-point line. Underneath, Portman. It's the sixth foul. That'll be a non-shooting foul, which at this point might be a break for UMBC. Which they'll be in the bonus on the next foul, and we're less than seven minutes in. Richie Riley will go to the bench. He'll take out Jackson coming in for the first time. 24. Dan Regis, a junior, 6'7, 235, from the country of Grenada. So he's invading <laughs> the U.S. as opposed to the other way around 35 years ago. What is it? If what's good for the goose is good for the gander? We were talking about this yesterday. Have you ever ordered goose or seen goose? Anywhere? I've seen goose. You mean like in a restaurant? Like in a restaurant. No, That's never. another turnover for UMBC, by I mean, the way. I've seen geese. I've seen geese in too. The water. But have you ever ordered goose to eat? I've not. The only place I've ever heard of goose in that context is in the famous song Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Hmm. By the way, how was your duck uh, last Outstanding. night? Outstanding. Sure was. Ate, ate too much of it. Any left? Nope. All Good got in case you missed it yesterday, John Feinstein, not a turkey guy on Thanksgiving. Duck, duck guy from way back. We have another whistle. Foul away from the ball. This one on UMBC. First one of the game for the Retrievers. This one will be on Portman. And again, six on Nickel State. Josh White with that call underneath the basket, the youngest of our three officials here today. Little Boy, they're shoot. bombing. Three they certainly are. It's a 12 to 2 run right now. And that one goes to Rutledge, another three pointer. Retrievers haven't scored in 353 now. Inside Portman. Just slipped, slipped and, and fell. fell. Yeah. Ryan Odom's going to need a timeout way. if they score here. Good hands by Portman. Ball is kept, though, by Sadler. Good job getting back that time by UMBC, even after the turnover, but they score anyway. Wow. And I think Ryan Odom has has got to think about seriously about a timeout here. Daniel Regis off the bench. The foul's on Portman. Let's take a look. Let's see. Nice drive there. Portman trying to get position, but kept retreating and kept making contact. That's why the foul was called. Nickel State on a 12-0 run as we speak. 14-0 run now. It was 9-7 UMBC. Now it's 21-9 Nickel State. Sherburn in front of Sherburn the shooter. got poked in the eye. He's in trouble. They're going to have to call timeout. He got poked in the eye grabbing that rebound. It was Sherburn and Regis who went up for it, unintentional. I don't and think Sherburn. he's hurt too badly, but he'll have to come out and have a look taken at that eye. So now he's got a back and an eye to deal with. Played his best game of the season yesterday by far after getting a cortisone shot on Monday. And even though he said before the game that it hadn't helped, it was clear he was moving better and obviously shooting better. Three of 12 shooting threes coming in, five of nine yesterday. Jordan Grant with a drive to the hoop and a foul called on Regis. Regis has been active since coming in for Nickel State. That's a two-shot foul. Would have been He would have gone to the line regardless because it's the seventh of the first half, but the Retrievers need to convert these. Daniel Aachen, a freshman from Eltham, England, has checked into the game. So we have two players from England playing here today. That's right. One for Nichols State, both big guys, although one guy is a huge guy. Aachen yesterday, 13 minutes, four points, a block and a steal. He gave, he gave, he also gave the Retrievers a big boost off the bench, both at both ends of the floor. It, beyond the one block, he was a factor inside defensively. 
Those points by Grant, the first in about four minutes for UMBC. Retrievers haven't had a field goal in five minutes. I think that was Aachen, yeah, getting, getting called. And now we'll get the timeout that I think the Retrievers need. 11.51 left to play in the first half. Nichols State on a big run leads UMBC by 10. Now time to recognize UMBC Scholar Athlete brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Today's student athlete is Kristen Watson. Look at that uh, GPA, 3.44, two-time all-conference, and the 2016 America East Defensive Specialist of the Year. She's also an assistant producer in our truck. Director. Director in our truck this afternoon. Which means that this is the hardest thing she's taken on. There's including no all of her classwork. Yeah, to work with guys like us, yeah, exactly. right? exactly. UMBC student athletes receive the Athletic Department's inaugural GRID Awards. Honorees are those that best embody retriever athletics core values, growth, respect, integrity, and teamwork, hence the acronym GRIT for UMBC. Congratulations to Kristen Watson. And Kristen, have a great game back there in the truck. Try to make us look good, Kristen. That's hard. Pretty near impossible there, John. Seriously. Play back in here, UMBC trailing by 10 to the Nickel State Colonels. And popping from three on the near side here is Rutledge. That's his first miss this afternoon. And the ball goes over to UMBC. The thing that Ryan Odom has to keep reminding himself and his players is they're not going to stay this hot. Remember, Chicago State was 70% the first seven, eight minutes yesterday. This is a better team than Chicago State. But everybody misses eventually. Wiles deflected. Yep, has it tipped by Powell. Ball stays with UNBC. 15 to shoot. Alert call there by Rob Snedden. Hawkins finding Curran. And that is a far side miss. Rutledge the rebound. Nickel State pushes the pace. I think you can just say Ibid when you say Nickel State pushes the pace. <laughs> yeah. Underneath looks like they'll call it on Hawkins. They will call it on Hawkins. That'll quickly. be a second. Take a look. Here you see Aachen trying to get position. That looked like an offensive foul on the first contact. They let that go, and then Aachen fouled on the second contact. But it looked to me as if Regis leaned right into Curran, uh, not Curran, to Aachen to push him backwards on that first contact, and they let that go. Regis seeing 10.6 minutes a game this year, but he came in early. He's made an impact here. Sitting down as Aachen Garrity checks back in the game for UMBC. Second of two for Regis. Fighting hard for the rebound and winning it for Nickel State is Rutledge. Inside for Regis. Ball loose along the baseline, and they call it out of bounds off the Colonels. Rob's standing right on that call. See if we can watch it here. See. Right there, right there. I'm not sure. 
He was though. And he had a better angle on it than we did. Nickel State by 11. And they'll pressure the basketball here in the backcourt. And Ryan Odom said not only do they pressure 94 feet, but they'll just run right at the ball. Joe Sherburn back in the game. The Dreamers look like they're rushing their threes a little bit. That's what Ryan Odom talked about before the game, getting good shots, not quick shots. Take the shot if it's there. Mara with penetration. Sherburn, that's what you like. Catch and shoot, Joe Sherburn. That should be his full name. That's a three-pointer for Sherburn, his sixth in two games. His eye's okay. Gary. Sherburn nine, yeah, nine for 22. And here's the answer from Rutledge. That's his third early on. Well, when a guy is not taking any, a two-point shot all season long, you got to know where he is. He was wide open. Rutledge with nine points, three of four from downtown. Sherburn, nice dish inside. Garrity, pass, good left. finish. Garrity has had trouble finishing around the basket so far this season. It's not, that was a good finish there off a nice pass by Sherburn. His first bucket this afternoon, the junior from Cleveland, Ohio. Garrity, 12 and a half minutes a game. And NBC back setting up that zone. You're going to play zone against this team. You've got to be very active. Here's Sadler with a turnaround. Offensive rebound Regis back to Sadler little hesitation and he scores well very good play by Regis getting the offensive rebound again tough to rebound defensively out of his zone, but he was smart enough not to try to force it back up but look for a cutter and he found one Nickel State shooting 67 percent from the field Sherman Sherman getting foul. Foul the act. that was a fortunate foul for the retrievers because as we know Joe Sherman's strength is not shooting off the dribble but watch here Comes a defender just reaching his arm underneath. And I'm not sure, Gary, that he made contact. But the way he reached his arm and the angle the official had, you're going to get called every time. The foul's called on Kevin Johnson. That's his first, eighth on the team. Joe Sherburn just laughed. I'm not sure I've ever seen him laugh. <laughs> he was having a conversation there with Sadler, who the foul was on. He is pretty stoic. He doesn't miss many free throws either, by the way. Well, maybe he shouldn't laugh before he shoots free throws. Maybe after. Sherbert, second of three is no good. Retrievers now, two for seven from the charity stripe. Arkel Lamar checks in and Garrity sits down. And they've had good free throw shooters on the line. And still haven't been converting. To Sherburn, one of three. The lead is 10. Here's Rutledge again. And now that came, went in and out, but he was too open. You've got to know where he is on every conversion from offense to defense. And just about every three he's taken has been from the corner. Lamar with a move inside draws the foul. Some contact underneath. Got hit in the head. According to Matt Dorn. Here we go. Nice pass again by Sherburn. And he got hit in the head. You can see his head snap back. Can't act on that. Lamar averaging almost 18 points per game. Came into the week fourth in the conference. Arkell had 23 against SMU, 24 against Colgate. At 17 yesterday against Chicago State. And a substitution here. Rubber 10 will check back in, the 7-1 center. And sitting down is Regis. So they have two big bodies in the middle. Yeah. They rotate. Regis isn't nearly as tall as Robert 10, but he is equally wide. Lamar swishes both his first points this afternoon. Retrievers have cut it to single digits. And UMBC in the zone. See if they try to move it inside. Nickel State has been in the zone most of this half. And I don't mean in terms of defense. Lamar is with rubber 10 inside. Now Sadler comes inside the lane and beats Sherburn to the basket. Clearly a team that has practiced against the zone defense because they've done a good job of breaking it down. The lead back to 10 for the Colonels, who are definitely in charge early on. Get it, Colonels in charge? Unfortunately, once you explained it to me, I did. <laughs> oh, man. Colonels are playing like a bunch of generals. Good shot fake there, but nevertheless, Robertan stayed with him. And Change the shot for Sherburn. Sadler with the rebound. He's got five this afternoon. Big 6'6 guard out of St. Francis Academy in Baltimore City. 
And he's a transfer also from North Carolina Greensboro. Played two years there. All, all conference first team sec as a sophomore. He was rookie of the year. And this is out of bounds off of Robartan and a timeout of the floor. No, it'll belong to Nickel State. 7.49 left to play in the half. Nickel State dominating inside the paint. Respect is hard work. Respect is dedication. Respect is earned on the court or on the field. Respect doesn't judge based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Respect is being the first conference to partner with the You Can Play Project. And the first conference in the LGBT Sports Safe Founders Club. Respect coaches, players, and the game. Respect similarities. Respect differences. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Back at you from the Rack Arena on the campus of UMBC, Nickel State under that man, Richie Riley, impressive early on. Yeah, second year coach, only 34 years old. He's got two boys, ages three and one. And for Halloween, they dressed up as Clay Thompson and Stephen Curry because his older son, the three-year-old, loves Thompson and Curry. And I said to him, so does that make you Steve Kerr? And he said, I couldn't shoot nearly as well as Steve Kerr, who was a great shooter in his time. His first job as an assistant in D1 was under Cliff Ellis at Coastal Carolina. Cliff Ellis wanted him to come and interview for the job. He was coaching in a D2 school, school, and he said to his boss, can I go interview? And he said, you can go interview, but you won't have a job when you come back wow. if you don't get it. He decided to go anyway. And when he saw Cliff Ellis on stage, you know, Cliff Ellis was the leader of a very good band for many, many years. He said, I want to work for him. Cliff Ellis hired him. The rest is history. Richie Riley in his second season now at Nickel State brought in nine newcomers this year. 72% of their points have come from their newcomers, 88% of their rebounds as well. So, you know, and, and, and it's interesting. You talk about what's good for the goose, good for the gander. ESPN picked Nickel State last in the conference this year in the preseason. SI picked them first. First. I'll go with SI based on what I've seen. Looked that was a good. walk. Good call. Got the ball in good position, but good defense there, forcing him to make one move too many, and that, that's what led to the walk. Tough when he catches the ball that deep. Watch it here. You see Max Curran. That's a total mismatch size-wise, but Max Curran stayed right with him. UMBC now trying to cut into that 10-point deficit. Robertan's leg weighs as much as Max Kern. Lamar with a tough catch in his knees and was able to elevate from that. He does such a good job of squaring up to shoot. Rarely takes an off-balance shot. What a story. Arkel Lamar came into the game a 586 three-point shooter this year. One of the top marks in the country. Oh. That percentage-wise is like shooting 80% from two. That's how good it is. From the corner, three-pointer, the answer from Rutledge. That's his fourth this afternoon. You know, I would tackle him before I would let him shoot. <laughs> Might have a better chance forcing him to go to the line. Yep, wrong sport, but a good idea. It's not always the wrong sport in basketball. I've seen some tackles. That was close Speaking to one, of it, like right? I said. <laughs> And that is Sadler being very aggressive for Nichols State. Former Hampton Sydney point guard, Ryan Odom, picking up that loose ball. Watch this. That's a tackle. We're not that far from M&T Bank Stadium. I'm sure John Harbaugh would recognize that. First foul on Sadler. It'll send Grant to the line for a double bonus. 
That is the 10th team foul on Nickel State. Jordan Grant, his field goal percentage, his three-point field goal percentage, and his free throw percentage have increased every year from a freshman to a sophomore to a senior. That's the mark of a hard worker. Grant hits both. Grant now with nine points in ten minutes in the first half. UMBC hanging around. They're down by eight in a game that clearly has been dominated by the size of Nickel State. Size and speed. Everything is fast with Nickel State. Nickel State out rebounding UMBC 13-8, but that is the sixth turnover for the Colonels. And they will turn it over. They average close to 18 turnovers a game. Lamar with the lead behind. And now it's a five-point game and a timeout for Richie Riley. And Richie Riley seeing the run, seeing his team get, seeing UMBC get a little bit hot. Lamar, second straight three ball, getting it going. Crowd getting going a little bit. Richie Riley says, well, let's take a little break here. That, to me, is the smart use of your use it or lose it timeout in the first half. So many coaches keep it in their pocket and then use it in the last minute when they really don't need it. That's a good time out there. Grant and Lamar John have combined for 17 of UMBC's 27 points. Jarris Lyles, 12 minutes, no points, three turnovers. And I, I just wonder, he didn't look 100% yesterday, failing to finish a couple times going to the basket, and he's so good at that. And when I, as I said, when I talked to Ryan Odom this morning, I asked him, I said, he fell on his left hip on that first play of the game. He said he heard it before that, and it just exacerbated when he went down yesterday. So he's playing a little dinged up. Not to make excuses, but that's just a fact. K.J. Mora back in the game for UMBC. In fact, he hasn't been in the game the last couple of minutes. And now a mishandle here as Rutledge couldn't catch the pass from Kamani Jackson. Well, Rut Rutledge better at shooting than catching. That went right through his hands. That's seven turnovers now against Nickel State. The Colonels on the season averaging just under 19 per game. And as I said, they, they press all the time. Didn't press all the time last year, Richie Riley said, because he didn't feel he had the personnel to do it. Now he does. Grant beats it. Sadler with the block, but the putback up and in from Curran. Nice block shot there, but Curran coming from the weak side. Always look to the weak side on a missed shot like that, even when it's blocked. The Dreamers have now cut it to three. 32-29. Here's a steal from KJ. Mara one on one and rejected and let's see it'll be a foul on Nickel State. It is a foul and again he blocked the shot cleanly but there was clearly contact with the body. Watch here right there clear contact. Got him in the chest. UMBC on a run of its own now a 7-0 run in the last minute 12 and it was keyed by Lamar. Two threes by Lamar but also keyed by much better defense. They got some turnovers one and Dunn's down there. A.J. Mara, an excellent free throw shooter. It was a 2016 Juco All-American last year. Is it too much of a push to say he does all the little things well? <laughs> I get it, John. I knew you would. Yeah. Second of two. And he does. And he Absolutely. does. And he's a smart, smart player, too. At seven assists and eight rebounds yesterday for a, what, a 5-4 guard? Although he's listed at 5'6". No, actually he's listed at 5'8". If he's 5'8", I'm 6'4". And no and no. Retrievers now down to one. It's a 9-0 run for UMBC. There's Rutledge over Lamar. Better defense from yeah. Lamar. Well, they had a hand in his face. Which Lyles, is what you got to do. Lyles, by the way, back in the game. Here's Mara pushing it. Mara, a little turnaround, and the Retrievers have the lead for the first time in a while. He fooled the defense there, went to the basket. They thought he was going to turn and pass the ball, and instead he turned around and took a little jump shot with nobody guarding him. And now and he just the knocked ball. it free. Mora. That's an example of how Mora can get low on guys. Lyles with the crossover. What a finish by Jarris Lyles. And a timeout, Richie Riley. His first two points of the game, but they're spectacular. And Richie Riley forced to take another timeout. 35-32 UMBC on a 
13-0 run in the last two minutes. Jerris Lyles with a finish for the Retrievers. Well, it's been a game of runs here at the rack on the campus of UMBC. Nickel State jumped out on a 14-0 run earlier, but John, the Retrievers have answered a 13-0 run in the last two minutes, have given them a three-point lead. Well, and the key has been defense because they've been able to set up, set up their zone, which they weren't getting to do early in the game, and thus they've created a bunch of turnovers and then been able to push the ball down court. Here you see Jarris Lyles making the most spectacular play of the game to date and his best moves that we've seen in the last two days. So maybe that little respite on the bench helped him get a little bit looser with that hip. Nine turnovers now for Nickel State. And as I said, they will turn it over. They average close to 18 turnovers a game. Part of it because they push the ball all the time. But part of this has been very good defense by UMBC. Ryan Odom said he expected a game of runs. And guess what? We have we've got it. a game of runs. Those points by Lyles, his first two today. Jerry is a two-time second team All-America East Conference. With that two, by the way, he has now pushed past Jay Green on the all-time UMBC scoring list. Lyles now with 1188 in 13th place all alone. UMBC still on his own. Now some help here from Lamar. A two-pointer by Sadler just outside the lane. Ball tipped out and Lamar. Well, and there you see Robert Tan's Achilles heel, his hand. Oh, look at this. Look here. Nice and look. Curran. Great look. Flushes it down for UMBC. And that was that was Curran running the floor, and Robert Tan simply not able to keep up with him. By five now for the Retrievers. Robert Tan looked like he had that rebound, but it went off his hands, and that is his weakness. The kick out for Johnson, he rushed that. All of a sudden, the basket is closed for Nickel State. Well, sometimes when the other team gets on a run, you start quick shooting. Retrievers now on a 15-0 run in the last three minutes. Ryan Odom trying to get a reset of the offense here. We've had three ties and two lead changes in this game. Lamar, turn around. That one is short. He was guarded there. He didn't need to take that shot. Pulled down eventually by Robert Tan. Three-pointer pushed up just wide. Again, another example. Nickel State coming down and zero passes on the possession. The shot goes in, it's fine. But when it doesn't go in, that's not running good offense. Nice pass again. Curry nice can't finish this time. Curry couldn't finish. And Robert Tan hobbling that back down court there. I think he got kicked in the ankle by accident there. Johnson with the basketball for Nichols State. Here's Sadler, 15 to shoot for the Colonels. Both of these teams love to shoot the three. Here's a whistle away, a push. That's still a non-shooting foul. That's only the fifth. So they'll inbound again with a 20-second clock. And that's the first personal foul on Jerris Lyles. 
Now, Regis will check back into the game, and Robartan, with that little limp, will sit down. Accidental kick there going to the basket by Curran. Regis gave him a good four minutes earlier, three points. I thought they played their rebound. best ball with Regis in there, trying to get it to him in the post. Now they double Regis and a turnover here as Regis travels with the ball. Dove on the floor for it, good hustle, but he, he still had possession and moved with it, moved with the ball, watch him. That's a good call. Yep, absolutely. Good camera work. UABC by five. Lyles again. Same move, but couldn't finish that time. And this time a foul called underneath on Curran for UMBC. Curran. Curran probably a little surprised that Lyles didn't finish and came over the back. Still one foul to give there. That was their sixth. So Max with his first foul. Just over two minutes left to go in the first half. He had two fouls in about four minutes yesterday. It's really a non-factor in the game. Been a factor here. Here's Sadler. Retriever switch. Yep, that's what it is. Curran's nice switch there from Lamar and Curran. And Curran did a good job there defensively. I was about to say he's really done a nice job on the defensive end of the court, especially playing against guys much bigger than him. I don't mean taller necessarily in the case of Regis, but far wider. And Curran only goes about 190 at best after dinner. <laughs> That's a bad turnover there by KJ Moore there. Just forced it into the lane. Here comes Johnson running the other way. Rutledge will wind up from three. Kenny He's was guarded. Last two, yeah. Here's Regis inside. Two moves. Oh, look at this. Curran and Lamar combined. I think Lamar got the block and Curran got the foul. And that'll be two on Curran. No, they called it on Lamar. Lamar I thought yeah. he had a good block from behind here. Here's Watch. No foul there. I thought the foul was on Curran, frankly. I think so did Curran. Yeah, you could tell by the look on his face. You're right. So this will bring the big man, Dan Regis, to the line. And as a team now, Nickel State just one for four from the strike. Regis is the only player who's been to the charity strike for them. And they haven't scored in a long while. 5-16. That's broken here. It's a four-point lead for UMBC. What would I do without you? Back me up on stats. No. You know what? What did you do without me before? I just made stuff up. Okay. I mean, people never look that up, you know? <laughs> You keep analyzing and I'll keep standing. How about work. that? Vara finds a lane. Battle for the loose ball, won by Regis. That was not a bad shot by KJ. He did find an open seam there and just couldn't finish. Pull up from Sadler. Same That's thing short. with Sadler right there. Lamar for UNBC. Nickel State is really struggling here, not just scoring, they look tired. And Lyles got fouled before the shot, but that'll be two shots. Doesn't matter, double yeah. bonus, yep. Juris will go to the line for UMBC. Cherry gets fouled right there, right with the push. And then he got fouled again as he went up. But as you said, made no difference because it's two shots since they're in the double bonus. Let's see Lyle. if after this, these free throws, if Nickel State goes two for one. I'm always surprised by college teams that in this situation don't try to go two for one. Steve Repikowski, a redshirt senior from Lansing, Michigan, checks in for the first time. They play up tempo all the time anyway, right? So mm -hmm. have a play where you get a shot in seven or eight seconds so that when UMBC gets it after a miss or a make, they can't play for the last shot. Substitution here. Curran will sit down. Sherburn back in. Lyles now with four. Ryan Odom thinking of Sherburn's long-range shooting on the last possession. Good job pre putting pressure on, making him work to get the ball up, killing some time. About a 12-second differential here. And they will not be able to go two for one now. That was a smart coaching move. Here's Johnson. Cross-court for Rutledge. 
Grant now on Rutledge in the corner. They kick it out. Sherburn got a hand in the face. He got there. Rutledge, yep. Rutledge has got That's a, a foul cold. over the back. Yep, and it'll send Lamar to the line. Retrievers with 17 seconds left. And the only bad news in that is that now Nickel State should get the last shot of the half. It will be UMBC's ball to start the second half, barring a tie-up. There's a teachable moment for Eric Skeeters, the assistant to Ryan Odom. Rutledge yes. for Nickel State. Sorry, John. Three for three to start the game from three. One for his last six. Well, and they've, they've defended him. They've gotten to him. He hasn't had an open look in the last ten minutes. That's short. I need it, I need it. Couldn't get the roll. As good a shooter as Lamar is. You expect him to be better at the free throw line. Lamar coming in was a 70% free throw shooter. Retrievers as a team were under 70% for the oh. season. Look at that roll. Got the roll there. Lamar had a look on his face like, thank goodness. Now they play for one here. Ten seconds left. They'll set it up. We'll see if maybe they try Rutledge here for three. Or they go the other way. Repikowski. Off the bench, wow. off the glass and in. That's a big bucket for Nickel State. That's their first field goal in forever. And it came at the buzzer by a guy who had just come in the game. First field goal in 627. I think he the, called bank. Whether he did or didn't, it does count. Nickel State cut it to five at the end of the first half. 40-35, UMBC leads. Good balance scoring for the Retrievers. Led by Lamar and Grant with nine. Ryan Odom is standing by with Paul Mittermeyer, guys. Thanks, Gary. Coach, uh, they got off quick, to, but you challenged your team at the eight-minute timeout. You went zone, and they responded with a 15-0 run. Yeah, that, we, we certainly got some stops down the stretch. That was good. And some rebounds. We were struggling rebounding the ball there early on in the game. And offensively, we weren't very good. You know, we scored on that first possession, and, and it was kind of back and forth, nine all. And they went on a big spurt on us, and a lot of it was due to our, our offense. I felt like they were making some tough shots. Number three, obviously, was on fire there for a minute. But, you know, he started missing, you know, as the, as the half wore on. Obviously, Peters did not play, you know, a, a whole lot in that, that first half. So that, that will be a factor for us next half. We're going to have to play to win. Coach, you talked about on the bench, play our tempo. And I think that's what your guys did over that last eight, nine minutes. Yeah, we want to try to control, you know, what happens when we have the basketball and not let them dictate exactly what we're doing and just playing under control. I think the, the good example of that was when Joe drove in the paint. He shot faked and then he dropped it off for an easy layup to Max. Those are the kind of plays that we've got to have. Good luck, Coach, second half. Right, thanks. Guys. Paul, thank you. Ryan, thank you. Good point by Coach uh, Roddy Peters with two fouls. Right. Really only played four minutes in the first half. Didn't seem to matter at first, but then eventually it did. Halftime coming up from the rack as we continue right here on ESPN3. No matter why you check in, family vacation, college reunion, business meeting, a girls only weekend, a friend's wedding, or just some well-deserved rest. You'll discover the convenience of the hotels at BWI. And while you're there, shop, play, and cheer. Find it all at the hotels at BWI. Respect is hard work, respect is dedication. Respect is earned on the court or on the field. Respect doesn't judge based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Respect is being the first conference to partner with the You Can Play Project. And the first conference in the LGBT Sports Safe Founders Club. Respect coaches, players, and the game. Respect similarities. Respect differences. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect.
Beware of the man eating honey barbecue wings. This is a dangerous man with nothing left to prove in life. Last week, he ate an entire order of blazing wings, and he didn't even cry once. It was crazy. So if you come back to the bar and see a man eating honey barbecue wings in your seat, remember, we warned you. Go get a new seat by the claw game. It's safer there. When I think about the core values of UMBC, I think about, first and foremost, academic excellence. We are working to help students to be their very best. This is a place for inclusive excellence and innovation. We have students from all around the world who are excelling, who are learning how to compete and cooperate, and most important, who have a sense of self, a purpose. They have a sense of where they want to go in the world. Back at you here from the rack. It is halftime. UMBC leading Nickel State 40 to 35 in the championship game of the Battle for Atlantis Mainland Tournament. Gary Stein, John Feinstein back with you. Yesterday in the opener against Chicago State, UMBC fought back from a 10-point deficit early. Same situation this afternoon. Yeah, and it was defense both times that I think turned the game around for UMBC. They started to get some turnovers. They got in transition. They weren't taking quick shots like Ryan Odom said, and they were getting out on the shooters, particularly Rutledge in, this, in the second half of the first half, and that's why they had this five-point lead. One thing to watch, though, as Ryan Odom pointed out to Paul, Roddy Peters only played four minutes, didn't score. That's not likely to continue in the second half. He had a couple quick fouls, but Jarris Lyles only had four points for the retrievers, so the two stars yeah, are going to both about. try to turn it on in the second half. Nine points for Arkell Lamar, including a couple of big three-pointers, really helped UMBC down the stretch to the five-point lead at the half. We'll take a timeout here. When we return, another segment of Dog Bites. We'll learn about a UMBC basketball player who's made a big impact off the bench.
Halftime at the rack with the score, UMBC 40, Nickel State 35. Time now for our halftime feature called Dog Bites, where we get a chance to meet a player or other UMBC personnel up close and personal. Today, we meet forward Max Portman. Hi, Retriever Nation. I'm Max Portman, and these are my dog bites. When I came on my visit here at UMBC, it really felt like it had every kind of every part I was looking for. Uh, the academics, uh, the team, my teammates are great. When I came on my visit, first met them, the coaches really seemed like they had my best interest at heart. So it was really an easy decision to make. Uh, so I really felt like I've improved every year like dramatically. So uh, ju uh, junior college is really where I felt like I really stepped my game up. So I wouldn't count any highlights really before then. But uh, uh, probably the first biggest one would be making an all-conference team my freshman year there. And then the second year, I was able to make first team all region, first team all conference, and that was uh, a really uh, big achievement I'm pretty proud of. Uh, the coolest person I've met so far is uh, Dr. Rabowski. Um, just hearing his stories when I came on my visit and just like kind of the uh, uh, energy he gave off just uh, really seemed like a great leader and just uh, a good person. Uh, it was really interesting to meet. So I just grew up uh, around basketball all the time since my dad played uh, for my childhood pretty much. He really did have a big impact on just my, uh, uh, drawing a blank. <laughs> so my dad had a pretty big influence on my life. Uh, I grew up around him playing basketball when I was a kid so it was just really uh, all I knew from a young age. Um, so I wanted to follow in his footsteps, play at Wisconsin, play overseas. Obviously the Wisconsin thing didn't work out, which worked out in my favor, I think. But um, him playing just really had a, a positive impact on my work ethic as a kid, just always being in the gym, following in his footsteps. And he never really had to push me. I just kind of really wanted to follow in his footsteps on my own. Well, with Max's dad playing at Wisconsin, it's no wonder that Max Portman's favorite NFL team is the Green Bay Packers, something that he and Joe Sherburn, I'm sure, can talk ad nauseum about in their time off. The Retrievers by five over Nickel State at the half. John and I will be back with halftime highlights when we return on ESPN3.
Gary Stein, John Feinstein, Paul Mittermeier back with you from the Retrievers Activity Center. UNBC leading Nickel State 40 to 35 at the half. Let's take a look at some of the numbers in the first half, John. Well, as you can see, both teams shot the ball pretty well. The rebounding was fairly even. All those stats are pretty close other than the bench points. Nickel State 18-8. But the two stats that aren't on there that are key is that Nickel State was only two for five from the free throw line. UMBC was 12 for 18, which isn't great, but they still got 10 more points from the line. And also the turnovers, Nickel State, which will turn it over, had 11. And that's when the game began to turn around was when UMBC began to get turnovers because, as you know, good defense often begets good offense. And both of these teams like to shoot the three-point shot, and hi these highlights, John, will attest. And we will see a lot of three-point shooting in this highlight package, much of it by Lafayette Rutledge, who looked like there were three of them out there early in the game. He hit his first three. He's not taking a two all year, and you can see why. He just goes to the three-point line, lines up his shots. He made his first three, but only one out of his last six because the defense got out on him after the first few minutes. And here you see Arkel Lamar with the first of back-to-back -back threes that really got UMBC going after they were down 12. He made those two on consecutive possessions. And then here you'll see Joe catch and shoot Sherburn with his patented catch and shoot from the corner for another three. In all, UMBC made four and the uh, and Nickel State made five, four of them by Rutledge. 20 minutes in the books, the Retrievers lead by five. Back for the second half at the rack when we return after this. Absolutely. Uh, it's Coach Riley talking about first half, talking about Peters. It's good stuff. That's fine. Oh, okay. Second half action from the rack on the campus of UMBC. Retrievers by five. Let's head down to the UMBC bench. Paul Mittermeier standing by. Paul? All right, Gary. Coach Riley for Nickel State at the half. He talked about, you know, not having Roddy Peters in that first half. He said the zone for UMBC and the choppy play slowed them down offensively. Too many fouls. I asked him about putting Peters back in the game with two fouls. He said, you know, I thought about it, but we were ahead for most of that half, so I decided against it. It was a, it was a pretty quick 15-0 run for UMBC. Peters back in the game right now. We're at number 23. We'll see what impact he has. Well, he just deflected the ball out of bounds. <laughs> but I understand that thinking. They're only down five. 
at the half and, oh, yeah. and, that, and they didn't have to worry about Peters picking up the third foul. 17 to shoot here for UMBC. Roddy Peters, of course, a uh, familiar name to Maryland basketball fans, played his freshman year at Maryland, was dismissed from the program, landed at USF, Southern Florida, uh, South Florida, dismissed from that program, and now here at Nickel State as a senior. And Richie Riley talked about how much he's grown up, learned from his mistakes, he's been a real leader on this team, realizes that this is, this is literally his last chance, and he's done a great job. He was a big-time recruit five-star recruit. Oh, he, he was the top 50 player in the country. So Retrievers now with seven to shoot. Lamar on the baseline. Three-pointer from Graham. And the Retrievers start off nicely in the second half. Well, I don't know why they left Grant. I mean, that was just a simple give-and-go play. Pass it in the post and right back out to the open shooter, and he was wide open. Jordan Grant now with 12 leads the team. And you're still there, and it ends up being a foul. It's on Lamar for UMBC as he reached in on Peters. It took UMBC about 10 minutes to commit a foul in the first half. Took him 45 seconds in the second half. So watch this. Yep. They double team there, and Grant's wide open. Why you double team a little guy in the post? I have no idea. Lamar's second foul for UMBC, first on the team here in the second half. Peters with the ball. He wants to go right to work, you can tell. And works, and it works for Nickel State. When a big time player goes scoreless in, a, in the first half, he's going to be dangerous in the second. Well, that's a storyline to watch. Curran. Nice, nice move, move by that's Max Curran. Curran. To the line. He beat Regis to the spot. And that'll be the third foul on Dan Regis. I was, well, notice that Regis started the second half. And, here you see, nice move by Max Curran. I was a little concerned about him coming out at the start of the half because he was clearly limping a little bit and grimacing, holding his left knee. But he looked fine on that play. Can't complete the three-point play. And as I mentioned, they didn't start Robert Tan, and you wonder if that ankle injury he had in the first half is still bothering him. Here is Regis with Nolan Garrett. Like a walk. Yeah, it was. That's, a turnover. That's the third turnover for Regis. His officials are doing a fine job. Every time I've made a call, they've had it. <laughs> So that's the barometer. Well, yeah, we've got uh, uh, Frank Scagliata, one of the great officials who's now a supervisor, sitting down to our left here. And Skaggs knows that he was almost as good an official as I was. Jump ball, possession arrow points to Nickel State. And Ryan Odom pleading a little bit that maybe there should have been a foul from behind there. Falls on deaf ears as usual. But maybe next time. No, I think Rob Sneddon heard him. He just chose to ignore him. Sort of like my children. <laughs> I think that's the universal. <laughs> Uh-oh. Bad pass there by Max Kern. And a steal for Nickel State by Powell. Here's Peters again. And all of a sudden, we got a foul fest going here in the first two minutes. Three fouls very quickly. Two for UMBC and one for Nickel State. Here you go. Kern. Throwing a pass almost like a quarterback not seeing the safety. That's never good. Not that I know of. It's good for the safety. The and kick they, out for Powell. That's what they do. They go inside. Dish inside for Regis. There's no question that Richie Riley at halftime re-emphasized to his players, drive the ball to the basket. Good things will happen. Curran. Hesitated. And Probably a good better. move by Kern to not take that shot. Lyles kick out Lamar. Wide open for three. Probably a good move by Lamar to take that shot. That's 12 for Arkell Lamar. He's three for four from downtown. And that three-point percentage continues to go up. And a quick shot there. Sadler on the Sadler. miss. Sadler. Again, that's only a good shot if it goes in. Because you're not running any defense. Lyles with the penetration, and you can see there's nobody on the court within 15 feet of Lamar as he drains that three. And a foul and on the other see, end here. You see the miss, battle for the rebound, and it looked like who got his hand in there. I believe it was Regis, wasn't it? It was Regis. That's a couple now on Regis. He's, a, he's out of the gate. They took him out, yeah. 
Retrievers with a miss on the other end. Curran now getting inside. And that's something that the Retrievers have done better, getting around big guys in the post to not allow that pass in there. And there must be something to the rubber tan injury because they replaced Regis in. with Jackson. Yeah. I mean, he was limping pretty badly when he came to, to the bench. Sometimes you just shake it off. Other times it swells up on you. Garrity gives Peters a look on the outside. Now a whistle away from the ball here. And a foul called on UNBC. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of free throws. That was on Garrity. And that's the second on Nolan. Now Regis with four fouls. That's so why they're he's down on the Regis bench. and they're down rubber tan right now. Well, they will play small, and they're good at playing small, though. Here's Peters. Big shot from Roddy Peters now with five. It's a six-point lead for UMBC. And that was a big shot for Peters. They were down nine. They needed something. That's a foul, boy. We're going to see a lot of them here in this second half, it looks like. Officials calling contact. Powell does not agree with that call. And that is his second foul. Team's third here early on. Both teams have committed three. Three fouls in a little more, six fouls in a little more than three minutes. That's not a good rate. Lyles double teamed and fouled again. Held along the baseline and again, Lyles takes a big spill. Replay. Go, Lyles. They inbound, they go for the double team here. Watch. Here comes the double, spins away from it and gets pushed. And fell on that left hip again. Yeah. He'll, he'll need a lot of ice after this is over. Two games in two days. Yep. And that was good defense. Off Lamar. The defense there provided by Jackson. Lamar thought he got fouled, but he really didn't. Retrievers will make a change here. Sherburn will check in for UMBC. And yeah. let's see, Curran will check out. Garrity thought he was coming out, but Curran's the one going to the bench. Richie Riley stays with his five from Nickel State. Richie Riley got a lot of help from his bench in the first half, 18 points. Trevers had nice bench performance yesterday against Chicago State. Yeah. Especially Brandon. the young big guys played very well. I haven't seen Brandon Horvath in this game, but he came off the bench along with Portman and Dan Aachen. Yeah. Aachen and Portman have both played, but only briefly. Three-pointer in the corner, and that one is good by Rutledge. So he's back on track for the moment. You just can't let him have any space. You give him space, he'll make the shot. And it's now a three-point game. Drew was led by as many as nine a moment ago. Ryan Odom said this was going to be a game of runs, and he's completely right. That's a big shot by the littlest guy on the court. And he's open again. Rutledge again, and, and he's he, fouled. He got to him too late. A chance at a four-point oh, play. Now. Oh, wait a minute. What's the call here? Well, he called the three, but he, I think he called the foul away from the ball. Underneath. Underneath on Nickel State. And it'll be on Rutledge. That's his first. Well, no, wait a minute. It's on uh, No, it's not on Rutledge. On he took the shot. Yeah, that's his third. So the third on Jackson. That's the fifth team foul against Nickel State just four minutes into the half. And that's a call you rarely see with the official saying the ball was in the air when, this, when the foul was committed. So Rutledge gets the three. He's got six three-pointers in the game. A leader by Sherburn. You don't see that from Joe Sherburn too often. It's a four-point game. That was a tiny little bit of contact foul. If you reach across the scorer's table, Gary, for some reason, they're going to call a foul on you. Well, I'm going to reach for my water now, so we'll see if that's the case. 15-39 left to go in the game. UNBC by four. Back after this.
Time to look at the road ahead now for UMBC and their television schedule on ESPN3. And we'll be back at it this coming Monday at noon when the men take on Shenandoah College. And then the women take over for a little while against American, Columbia, and Denver. And then Juan Dixon makes an appearance, John, with Coppin State. Yeah, and that could be the last game in the rack. We're still waiting for absolute confirmation on when the move across the street is going to be made. The, uh, the court is in, and Ryan Odom says he's just waiting for somebody to give him the keys. So it could be, Coppin State could be the last game here, and if so, the first game in the new building would be against Northern Kentucky, which was an NCAA tournament team a year ago. A very exciting team. Getting, getting the keys to the new building, is that like getting the keys to your new car? I think for a basketball coach yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Peters on a drive. That's too strong. The tip no good by Jackson. Rebound Lyles. Jarris needs to not try to go too fast here, but if you can get to the basket that way, that's okay. He recognized that there was no help. Beat his guy off the dribble and makes a Jarris Lyles special. I would describe that as a patient move by Jarris Lyles. Well, he, Lyles. He, wait, he read the defense. Here's a three-pointer by Rutledge. He's two for two now in the second half. He's okay. got seven bombs tonight. What they're going to need to do with Rutledge, seriously, is they're going to have to have him arrested. <laughs> they got to drum up some charge. Yeah. Well, here on UMBC campus, I'm sure the UMBC campus police can think of something, right? Seven for 12 for Rutledge. He started out three for three, then went one he, for six. He's three for three in this half. Yeah. And he's the reason this is a three-point game. Foul on the Colonels. That's a six-team foul, so they're, they'll be in the bonus the rest of the game. 14-49 to go, and now Robertan is going to come back in because Jackson just committed his fourth. They got they got foul trouble. They got Regis with four. They've got Jackson. Does he have three or four? Four. He's got four. Powell's got three. Well, but the most important thing for them is Roddy Peters has not committed one in this half. Peters on Lyles. Lyles closed by Peters and throws it up and in. He's on the floor yet again, and they're five on four coming back. Lyles hustling to get back, Rutledge. and too late. Eight three-pointers for Rutledge. Well, K.J. Mora got over there, but he's just too small to get a hand in the face. He got a hand in the chest. Two-point game. Lyles tried to find Sherburn underneath. Not a good idea. Peters is stripped the other way. Great Lamar defense comes there. Away with it. Jordan Grant reaching in from behind. The leave behind for Sherburn. He'll penetrate. Sherburn off the goal glass. Tending. And do they call it? Yes, yes they, they do. do. It's on rubber 10. Not a smart play there because I don't think that ball was going in. Here you see Sherburn with the flying. See where the ball was? It was going wide. It went wide of the square. He got bumped too. Should have been a foul, but they'll take the two points. Eight points for Sherburn. Lyles now also with eight. Rutledge has 24 on eight three-pointers in 13 tries. Lafayette Rutledge has not taken a two-point shot this year. Why would you? 57 <laughs> shots, 57 three-pointers. You that good shooting the three? Here's Repikowski for three, and it doesn't matter who's in the corner yeah, for it, Nickel State. Something about that corner to our right. But he made a key bucket at the end of the half coming off the bench, and now he comes in and makes it three. 11 three-point field goals made for Nickel State today. Here's Mara in the land of the Giants, and Mara nice. puts it in. Wow. You see that drive, and you go, KJ, what are you doing? What are you doing? Nice shot. Eight points for KJ off the bench. Mara gets a correction. Now Lyles nice gets a hand in. I don't think they need the shot clock in this game. <laughs> Didn't need it yesterday either. Peters for three. Well, I think once or twice you did say the clock's under 10. Twice, actually. Yeah, that's two more times than you've said it here. Sherburn wanted a catch and shoot, but coming out on the defense was Sadler. No help. Look at this. Mara, another lane. There's no help. You got a little guy going to the basket and nobody comes to help. And you can see why there's a pain look on Richie Riley's face over there. Muggsy Bogues liked. Except Muggsy Bogues' left leg weighs as much weighs as much as KJ Moore does. Yeah, he was a stocky little guy. No he doubt. was a, a oak tree. A little oak tree. Retrievers by five. 
coming out on defense as Lyles, and that helps. That's the a foul. miss and a foul will be called on Sadler. And that was a frustration foul by Sadler. Let's take a look at the littlest guy on the floor doing some big things. Totally fearless. And watch here. He beats his man, and nobody comes to help. That's three fouls now on Sadler. And they're in the bonus the rest of the game. Regis and Jackson both with four, Powell with three. Sadler out of the game with three. Lamar has not been good from the free throw line today, and this is one and one. Let's see if he can get his act together. Three of six. Nope, three of seven. That That's, hurts. That does hurt. And it's going to hurt more. Oh, he missed one. That wasn't his spot. That wasn't, you're right. Here's Grant the other way. Going to break down Sadler. And they're forcing it a little bit Over now. Over the back now on Lamar. You, you got to recognize the difference between an open lane and a protected lane. Grant did not do it that time. See, there, he was guarded well. No foul, no contact until Lamar fouls coming over the back on the rebound. Lamar checks out with 12. I wonder if there's a little frustration by Arkell there ha having missed the one and one. Max Curran checks in with 10. Here's Sadler. Up top for Peters. Ball screen by Sadler. Oh, he's open inside now on KJ. Yeah, that's that's a mismatch, to put it mildly. Oh, good work here by Jackson. By Johnson, I should say. And they called Kern for a foul. And that's a non-shooting foul. Last one. That's a nice little flurry by Nickel State before the timeout here at 11.46. It was a 10-point lead for UNBC, but some three-pointers and good inside play for the Colonels have them down by three. 11.46 to go. This is a look from the right corner here on the near side of the court. What, I guess 20, 22 feet away. This is how it looks to the players on Nickel State. Well, the, remember, whenever you watch basketball teams do shooting drills, good shooters will start in the corner there and will work their way around the three-point arc to the other corner. So they've taken this shot a lot. That shot was guarded, and he still made it. Two by Rutledge, one by Repikowski. I guess it really doesn't matter. Coming into the game, Nickel State was tied for seventh in the country, 12 and a half threes per game. The Retrievers were 10th in the country at 12.2, and we've seen that play out today. Yeah, I mean, both these teams like to shoot threes. They like to shoot them in transition, and that often leaves an open shot. But a couple times, I got to tell you, Rutledge has hit, hit those shots with a hand in his face. Nickel State with 11 three-pointers today. The Retriever was just six. But UNBC has outscored the Colonels by 10 from the charity strike. In spite of the fact that they haven't shot it that well. Here's Repikowski. And that's a three from way downtown. He's taken three shots in this game. They've all gone in. That was a set shot. That looked like the 1950s. That looked like Bob Cousy. Like I said, the 1950s. <laughs> and now we're tied at 62. 
That is our fourth tie this afternoon. Mara with a couple of good drives moments ago. Curran will try and answer. It's too strong, and Sadler pulls it down for the Colonels. Uh-oh. Rutledge. Wow. That is nine three-pointers for Lafayette Rutledge. You know what his spot is? Everywhere. Inside the gym. And they'll bring Lamar. I'm talking about UMBC back out on the floor in a moment. He seems like the only one that could calm down Rutledge. Sherber answers nice for answer. UMBC. And a quick timeout for Ryan Odom. Wants to talk when well, he wanted to get Lamar back in the game, and he wants to talk defense too. We're tied at 65 with 10:44 to play. The star of the game is Lafayette Rutledge. 15 shots from three, nine makes. Repakowski, by the way, isn't too bad either. Repakowski looks like he should be playing on a beer league team. <laughs> Well, the story of this basketball game right now is number three for the Nickel State Colonels, Lafayette Rutledge, a senior guard, six-footer out of Gautier, Mississippi. And this young man with nine three-pointers in 14 attempts today, he has not tried a shot inside the three-point line this season. He had seven makes against UT Rio Grande Valley, six against Spring Hill, but a career-high nine this afternoon. Well, there's a reason why he's not number two, that's for sure. Because he shoots those threes yeah. all the time. And you know what? I, I mean, it almost sounds like I'm talking analytics here. No. But if you're that kind of shooter, statistically, why would you take a two when you can make threes that often? Yeah, do the math. We did it yesterday. Nine for 15 now officially for Rutledge. Nickel State with the basketball. That was Rutledge's spot, but Lamar was on him. So that's 27 points, think about it, on 15 shots. It's almost two points a shot. Yeah, your math is very good. And that's including six misses. That's exactly right, that's the point. Repikowski in the corner. Repikowski doesn't have a miss. That's, that's, a, that's a touch foul. On I, Lamar. I, again, I, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think officials are doing a good job in this game because it's very physical and very up and down. But if the player doesn't lose possession, if he keeps going, why do you take the advantage away from him and stop the game? Watch. Here. He's still going. Now, that was a big foul. Lamar's fourth foul at the 10-20 mark. And he comes out of the game. He's the only one that's been able to defend Rutledge. Repikowski. Nobody's defended him. My heavens. Like I said, he looks like he should be in a beer league. All he does is make shots. Mara. Two-pointer. He, he looks like he should be in a peewee league, and all he does is make shots. <laughs> Repikowski now with 11 points. He's perfect from the field. Four for four, including three from downtown. Repikowski has 11 points in five minutes. That's good numbers. 
That means if you played 40 minutes, oh no, you'd have 88 points. That was a walk. Sadler can't convert. I thought he, I thought he traveled before the foul. Foul is called on UMBC's KJ Mara. Take a look. Oh, that's Repikowski. That's Repikowski with the 50 set shot. Tavon Sadler at the line. St. Francis Academy in Baltimore. He looks bigger than 6'6", doesn't he? Yeah, he's wide too. He's a big guard. Sadler was the former Maryland State Player of the Year at St. Francis, the Baltimore Sun Player of the Year. Played not, for Nick Miles at St. Francis. He's not a former. He's a past Player of yeah. the Year. He is still the Player of the Year. That is correct. From that, from that year. Gets the second. It's a two-point game. Nichols State in the lead. On the march to 100, perhaps. <laughs> They they average both make uh, you know scoring and giving up 90 plus 95 and 93. Laura working on Sadler. Here's the give back for Sherber. May have forced that. Well, he was going left. Nice. Garrity though. Oh, and Garrity showing up at just the right time for a key bucket there. That's Garrity's third and fourth points today. Oh, he's Sadler. tough to stop. Curran could do nothing about it. I mean, he's tall, he's big, and he's strong. That's 13 with nine rebounds, despite missing a lot of time with three fouls. He's guarding Garrity, who's UMBC center, and he's a guard. Nolan can't make the left. Peters has it taken away. Curran the other way. Uh, Curran should have pitched it back. Garrity working hard, and a foul called underneath, I believe, on Repikowski. Definitely called on Nichols State. We'll see who they give it to. You're right, Repikowski. Over the back, current forces that shot, but good hustle there by Garrity, and he gets fouled as he's grabbing the ball by Repikowski. Puts Nolan at the line. One and one here. First trip to the stripe tonight for Garrity. Oh, that's two one and ones they've missed. That may come back to haunt him. Just 12 for 21, nine misses for UMBC. Sadler all the way. And all of a sudden, Nichols State with a four-point lead. Oh, Nichols State doing what they do, taking the ball to the basket. They've made a lot of hay with their three-pointers, but now they're using their size. Small lineup out there, basically, for UMBC. The Colonel's on a five-for-five five field goal streak. Lyles, a three-pointer. That Down was huge. Lyles double figures now with but, 11. Again. Nichols State, Peters going right to the basket. There's no hesitation. They're basically saying, stop us or foul us. Let's watch Lyles three. This is, this is a big shot. Jarris Lyles has not been shooting very much from outside, but pulls up there, down four. Another miss there. The game could have started to get out of hand a little. Retrievers have six players in double figures. Lyles for the career at UNBC now stands at 1,197 points. Well, those last three were pretty darn important. Teachable moment here for Mara. At the line is Peters. First free throw was good. And Peters gets both. So Peters, who was held scoreless in the first half, now with seven in the second. You had to expect that, at least. Had five quick ones, if you remember. KJ working on Tough Repikowski. Tough shot. Repikowski stayed right with him. Rebound Peters. Peters and Curran. No hesitation, but good defense there by Curran and Sherburn to stop him. Miles all the way back. First rebound. Oh, he misses at the rim. Went through two guys, looked like he had a good shot, but didn't finish. Action is fast, Repikowski. Oh, he missed one. How do you like that? Rebound Curran. That's an Correct. open shot. Sherburn. No, it worked out. Sherburn passed up the open three. Shot fakes and gets a layup. Sherburn with 19 yesterday, now with 13 this afternoon. Made more two-point shots than three-point shots. That's a little unusual for him. 
Sherbert's only taken three three-pointers, has made two. Coming up on seven minutes in a one-point game. Peters and Sherbert. Peters wins the battle. Yeah, he did. Went by Sherbert, nobody there to help. Roddy Peters now with nine and a half. It's a three-point lead for the Colonels. What a game. Tremendous game. Lyles, the kick out. Good ball movement. Mara for three. Peters underneath, and it'll stay with UNBC when we come back. What a pace here in the second half. KJ Mara has come up big for UNBC with 12 points. But Roddy Peters on the other end, just as big for Nickel State. Steve Repikowski, the redshirt senior from Flint, Michigan, hadn't made a huge impact for Nickel State so far this season, but this game for Repikowski, watch what he's done from downtown. And he has really come in and done a heck of a job making his first four shots. As you said, six points for the season, 11 today. And I think injuries and foul trouble are the reason he got in the game. Big guy, there, Robert Tan was, has clearly been hurt. He's barely played in the second half. Their other two big guys are in foul trouble. Had six points coming into the game, and you see what he has this afternoon. 11 in eight minutes. Steve Repikowski and Lafayette Rutledge <laughs> have just shot the lights out of this arena. Well, Rutledge, you knew coming in, was, as Dean Smith used to say, a plus shooter, meaning you, you should guard him at all times including when he's walking onto the court before the start of the game. I call him a plus-plus shooter today. But Repkowski's been a huge surprise. Those two have combined for 13 baskets, 12 of them from three-point distance. Having said all that, Nichols leads by three, and the Retrievers have the ball. KJ for three. That that hit the side of the... Uh, that was way off. Side of the window. I think he rushed it a little bit because he saw Sadler running at him. They call a foul though underneath, and it's against Nickel State. That'll be on Peters, number three. And that'll send Garrity to the line for a one and one. Last one and one of the game here. The Retrievers have given up four potential points by missing two front ends of one and ones. One by Lamar, one by Garrity. So let's see if he can end that streak. Nope, Cannot that's six potential points gone. And that could end up being a huge difference maker in this game. Now this is a foul on the floor, literally on Repikowski. And Mara. Mara comes up limping. Ryan, Ryan Odom looking to the bench to send, to see if he's gonna try to send Sherburn in for Mora, but he, he can't do that. If a player's injured and can't shoot a free throw, it's a, the other coach has the, gets to designate who comes in. Sherburn's gonna come in after Mora shoots the free throws. Retrievers have missed 10 free throws today. 
12 of 22 until that well, made by Zach, Mark. he's coming in for Garrity. So looks like KJ will stay in. KJ's going to suck it up and stay in the game. Sometimes the littlest guy is the toughest guy. KJ, an excellent free throw shooter, better than 80% last year. Yeah, you jinxed him. Oh, man. He couldn't wait till after he shot it? <laughs> I'll know for next time. So, Trigger's trail by two. That's eight potential points on the last four fouls committed by Nichols State, and UMBC has converted one. And that's 11 misses overall for UMBC from the line. Guess who? Yeah, but that Way was short. Put back, though, up and in. Lyles did his job. He got the hand in the face. But the shot was so short that nobody was in position to get the rebound. Kevin Johnson now with seven for the Colonels. Who lead by four over UMBC. Lamar open. Way it's off. off. Way off. Peters for Nickel State. Trevers looking a little tired here the way they're shooting the ball. Good shooters missing badly. That's that's usually a sign of weariness. Nickel State 14 of 28 from downtown, 50 percent. Retrievers just eight for 18, 44 percent. That's just not bad. a bad number. Yeah, that's yeah. not bad. It's all relative. Sadler taking on Sherburn and he uses the window and now it's a six-point lead for the Colonels. Once they get in the lane, they're quick jumpers and they're big. Makes them hard to guard. That's 17 for Kayvon Sadler in a homecoming. Grant gets a man up in the air. Couldn't finish and Sadler the rebound. And this is a this is a big possession psychologically. UMBC needs a stop here. My favorite stat, John, a double-double for Tavon Sadler. 17-12 turnover here for Nickel State. That was good defense and see if Lyles can finish. Yep, he does big play. Huge play there. Turnover leading to a basket and a potential three-point play. And he hits the floor again hard, John. Well, he's used to it by now. Here's the steal. Great defense by Lyles. This was 90% Jarris Lyles and 10% Grant with the pass. Lyles with the finish, goes to the floor again. I think there's a 10 in, ingrained into the court at this point. And now comes the rainbow free throw. Swish. Three-point play, Lyles with 14. It's so a three-point lead for the Colonels. Nichols could have led by eight or nine. Instead, the lead goes back to three. Kick out for Repikowski. He's human, it turns out. Lamar for UNBC. Missed his last two. Lyles penetration, kick out, wide open, KJ. Wow. We're all tied up at 81. You give KJ more of that kind of time, he's not going to miss. 16 for the little man. I thought Ryan Odom was on the verge of needing a timeout. Now I think Richie Riley's going to call one. No? Yep, he is. He is. And that'll be the last TV timeout here with 4.11 to go. I'm calling KJ the little big man from now on. Here's KJ, and this is why. They look dead there, and all of a sudden they get...
Well, the little big man has turned it on here in the second half. K.J. Mara, who missed the first three games because of a suspension, has come on with a season-high 16 points today. And making critical shots just when it looked like things were going to go south for UMBC. And here he's wide open, and he just swishes it. I got a better nickname than little big man. That's been used a million times. Go ahead. How about the little warrior? Oh, love it. Because he is a warrior. Absolutely. Fearless. He is fearless. And and if you if you look at him and you're the opponent, you go, okay, we know he's quick. We know maybe he's going to get some steals. But you don't understand that he's going to be in your face all over the court the entire game. The Florida State Juco Player of the Year last year. The two, years single, two years ago. The single game assist record holder in Juco history with 20. Led the country in assists two years ago. And he's doing it now on the D1 level for UMBC. We're tied at 81 with just over four minutes left to play. UMBC back in that zone. There's Sadler working with Grant. That's got to be something. That is a and jump. called it a charge. Wow. Now, one of us called it a charge. Well, Nick, I think what's going to happen is they're going to say the foul was inside the circle. Let's take a look. See. I, I don't think there's any question that he went into Lamar, but watch, his foot's inside that circle. I think it's going to get called the other way. So you're saying it'll be a foul. I think they're going to go to the monitor here and see if oh, Richie Gr Riley is Grant just was upset inside the circle. Belief for a moment. Well, and Ryan Odom and Richie Riley kind of yelling at each other a little bit. Oh, Richie Riley now right up in the official's face at midcourt. Well, they're both up there. And they're both entitled to an explanation of why they're going to the monitor. I think the question is, there's no question that the contact was initiated by Sadler. I'm calling it a double foul. That's interesting. We'll get an explanation here. Here we go. John, you take it. The official comes over here to the table. Double foul is the call. Officials explaining to John Feinstein the situation. And so it looks like it'll. So that is the fifth foul then on Sadler, I believe. That is five on Sadler. He's gone. Now they do retain possession with eight seconds on the shot clock. It was a double foul. And the reason it's a double foul had nothing to do with the arc as I thought, because I thought that Grant's foot was in there. But one official had the call, had a charge. The other official had a block. And they decided to split the baby in half and call a double foul there, which is important to Nickel State because, as you say, they lose Sadler. 17 points and 12 rebounds. Good a defense miss by there. Lafayette. Rutledge. Good defense by Lamar. Forced Rutledge off balance. So that was a key moment in the game. But Sadler's gone. Miles gets a good screen from Sherburn. A path to the basket, and the Retrievers have the lead. Nice screen, as you said, by Sherburn. That gave Lyles enough room to get to the basket. Now, here comes one of those get a stop moments that happens in close games. And it's going to be Peters for sure shooting. And Big rebound for Lyles. And good defense by Lyles, and he gets the rebound. Retrievers, and it is a game of runs, John, on an 8 0 run in the last minute 20. Just when I thought they were out of gas, they it found was another turnover. gear. It absolutely was. The steal by Lyles that led to the three-point play, but there's a really good block by Jackson on Lyles. And Lyles is behind the play, and Rutledge. now he's open. Wow. Ten three-pointers for Lafayette Rutledge. Well, Rod Rutledge made a great shot fake to get himself open there. Lyles was caught off court after his shot got blocked, and they took advantage. And Nichols State has the lead. Walk, good call. That is just the 12th turnover for UMBC, but the seventh for Jarris Lyles. He drove into traffic there, realized he couldn't get the shot up, and was doing the right thing, kicking it back to the perimeter, but he got he he shuffled his feet as he did so. Good call. Career high 30 points for Rutledge on that three. Retrievers have six players in double digits, led by Lyles and Mara with 16 apiece. Peters is going to the basket here, I promise you. With Sherber. Good defense. Blocked by Sherber. Blocked the shot. Lyles picks it up. 
Let's Every single trail by one. Look out, Jarris, from behind. Yep, you got to know the guys behind you. Kevin Johnson with the steal. Uh oh. The lead behind uh -oh. for Rutledge. The tip in is good. What a play underneath by Johnson. Little guy. A three point lead for the Colonels. Under two minutes now. That's a good catch and shoot. That's a tie ball game. Good patience by Jarris Lyles. He's got reason to be frustrated about his two turnovers. Last couple possessions. Draws the defense to him, finds Sherburn open, and Sherburn drills it. His third three, Sherburn with 16. 130 left to go. What a game. This game's going overtime. It's destiny, right? <laughs> On the Friday after Thanksgiving. Miles went for the steal. Now they got a man open. Repikowski pulls it back. Three to shoot. That's a tough Peters. shot. Peters! Offensive rebound at the buzzer. And, and it's a great off. play by Grant reaching in and causing him to lose it out of bounds. Out of bounds off of Jackson. Possession, UMBC. Take a Jackson look. there in position to get the rebound, but watch Grant reach in and it goes off of Jackson's leg. Clear call. Good call, great play by Grant, staying after it. The things you don't see in the box score, John. Absolutely right. Sherburn. It'll be out of bounds off of Peters, 17 to shoot. I wonder if Ryan Odom wants a timeout here to set up this possession because it's so critical. Yes, he does. Riley will make a substitution. He'll bring in Powell. We'll keep it here with 103 left. Ryan Odom calling a timeout for UMBC. He's still got two left. Nichols State has one left. KJ Moore trying to stretch out there. Everybody's got to be exhausted given the pace of this game and the second game in two days for both these teams. A 30 second time out here. Keep in mind, Arkel Lamar, who's really been the only one that can defend against Rutledge today, out of the ball game with four fouls at the 10 20 mark. He's since returned. Ryan might try to go offense defense here if, if they get a dead ball. And. I think what they, what you do here is either one of the guards, K.J. Mora or Jarris Lyles, is going to try to create something, get into the lane, and if help comes, find an open shooter. If help doesn't come, then you take it to the basket yourself. Open looking for, they'll be looking for Lamar or Sherburn on the perimeter or looking to go themselves. And Lyles can shoot it. They can both shoot it from the perimeter, too. But I think they're going to be the creators here. Everybody on the court can shoot the three right now. Grant, Lamar, Lyle, Sherburn, and Mara. Including, I think, the officials. <laughs> and comes, we know what Nickel State can do. Here comes Lyles to create. Great ball fake and great block. Great block, and Lyles is hurt. Peters converts the other way. Lyles is hurt. Shot got blocked. He got hit in the eye. No call. Ryan Odom is saying, how can that be no call? And then Peters goes all the way to the basket for a two-point lead. Well, that was the worst possible outcome for UMBC. And Lyles doesn't want anybody no, coming on the court. He is staying in the basketball game. Because he doesn't want to come out here. Here we go. Watch there. Right there. There was contact with, on the help. Jackson Lamar. came over to help. Foul to block the shot. A blocking foul is called on Jackson underneath. Okay, and now that the, will be five on Jackson. He's gone. Well, that's good news for UMBC. The bad news is Arkel Lamar has struggled from the free throw line today. Three for seven, and the Retrievers have struggled as a team. Now it is a two-shot foul. They don't have to worry about one and one. Both teams in a double bonus now. 11-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Three for eight. The He's Trevor's a good shooter. 12 free throws UMBC has missed. And if they walk off the court today with a loss, that's going to be the reason why. Not just 12 free throws, but three front ends of one and ones. So you add three more, really. Second of two for Lamar. That's good. One point margin. You play defense here. You don't foul. 13 points in 31 minutes. Jarris Lyles has played 37 minutes in this game. And that's pretty much his average. They'll hold here for a little while. They'll run it to under 10, and then they'll set up a play. I think it'll be Peters coming over to get the ball and then go to the basket. No nope. Kick out, no. Nope. That's Shorter. not the shot they that's wanted. Short. Offensive oh, rebound. Now they have to foul. Now they took it they away. They stole it. Lyles, Lyles took it away. With 12 seconds and to go. 
got fouled. And Richie Wiley is apoplectic on the sideline. Trying to calm his bench down. Watch it here. There you go. Lyle strips the ball there, and then he gets hacked from behind. I'm not sure why Richie Riley's so upset. That's a foul, and now Dan Regis has fouled out. That's the third foul out well, for Nickel State. And Jarris Lyles will shoot two. And actually, it's not such a bad thing for them to have Repikowski in here instead of uh, Regis, Regis because he's a shooter, exactly. Lyles at the line with the Retrievers trailing by one. 12.6 left to go in regulation. He's been in the middle of everything for the Retrievers, both good and bad. What a gutty game for Jarris Lyles today. And Richie Riley is going to take a timeout regardless whether this goes in or not. Second of two for the senior. The grad, actually. Retrievers by one. Yeah. And they don't call a timeout. No, they're going to call it. They want to call it at midcourt. Let's see where they can get it there. They do. They call a timeout. No, they're not. Well, no, now they, they are. are. Riley was screaming for the timeout. 7.3 left to go. And that's their last one, remember. So if they have any trouble getting the ball inbounds, they cannot call a timeout. It's a full because it's the last one. And I'm going to be shocked if anybody but Peters takes this shot unless they've got two, two options. Let me back that up. Two things, one of two things is going to happen. Peters is going to the basket and shooting and hoping to either make it and or draw a foul, or he's going to the basket and he's going to pitch it out to Rutledge to try and get him to end the game with a three the way he's dominated this game offensively for Nichols State with the threes that he's made. And of course, of course, if I can figure that out, you know Ryan Odom and his coaches can figure that out. The question is, how do you defend it? Don't be shocked if the retrievers don't come out in the zone here with Lamar or somebody, probably Lamar, leaning towards Rutledge. Now, they're over there trying to determine exactly how much time should be on the clock here. It's 7.3 at the moment. Lamar has really been the only effective defender against Rutledge today. Because he's got size. Here, the question is, that looked like a, a palm, by the way. But they don't call that anymore in basketball. That's Michael Jordan rule. And we show that because they called the timeout. They actually hadn't called the timeout yet, I don't believe. There's the timeout being called right there on the far side of the court in front of the bench. It's being called by Repikowski, by Repikowski. and by the coach. Because remember, the coach can't call right. it while it's the ball's be, in play. Correct. Got to be called by the player. He's screaming at his it. players. I think they're also deciding exactly where the ball's going to come in bounds. And it's going to be to our right, foul line extended, right around the three point line. That's and a little further than I thought. Now, if you look at the replay, the ball was in. 7.3, the time is good. That is the correct time. Now, if you look, he was right about where it says the rack RAC. He was right around the three, uh, the C, excuse me. And that's where they're going to inbound it from. And I would think it's going to go to Peters, and he's going to penetrate with Lyles on him and either go to the basket or he's going to kick it to Rutledge, who is in his favorite spot in the corner to our right with Grant on it. Here comes Peters. They're trying to deny him. They don't have time. Lyles deflected it. The ball's in play. Here's Peters, three seconds. Shooting for three. No good. no good. One second. Retrievers have gotten out of here with a win. Amazing win. What a finish. Just an amazing, amazing win. And Richie Riley not happy with the officials as they go off the court. But I don't think he had a complaint. I thought that was just great defense by the Retrievers. Tremendous ball game for both teams. Ryan Odom wins the tournament here at UMBC. The battle for Atlantis mainland. Let's re-rack it and show you that final play in a moment. We'll do it when we return. What a battle. Richie Riley has a lot to be proud of. And so does UMBC as they beat Nickel State by one at the round.
the one next to the right on Wednesday at the time line. And you're welcome. What a finish here at UMBC, 89-88, the Retrievers win the championship. Time now for today's play of the game, presented by the hotels at BWI, and why wouldn't it be this, John? Well, great defense here by the Retrievers. I mentioned that they were out of timeouts, and they did a great job denying the ball to Peters, and there you see Jarris Lyles with the deflection. Peters kind of loses track of the time because he had more than two seconds left. Goes to the basket, doesn't go to the basket, and who gets the rebound? Jarris Lyles. He was all all over the court the last five minutes. The play of the game is the final play of the game, and it's brought to you by the hotels at BWI. Log on to UMBCHotels.com. These fine hotels have created special overnight rates exclusive to UMBC athletic supporters, fans, and alumni. I take my glasses off, and we send it down to Paul Mittermeyer, who's on court with the player of the game, Jarris Lyles. All over the court in the last five minutes. Now he's with me, Jarris. Uh, before we get to anything about the game, what a game, huh? Just back and forth. Definitely. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough opponent coming into the game. Uh, we prepared. We didn't have that many days prepared, if, or any, because we had a game yesterday, but we knew we just had to come out here and be relentless. They got a big lead early. We fought all game. Take me through the last defensive play. I guess you really wanted to make sure that Peters didn't get the ball, right? Mm -hmm. uh, coaches told me to deny him all the way and not let him get the ball. You know, I got a hand on the ball. I got a chance to save it in. He got a, he got a good look at it after I saved it, but, we you know, we got the rebound at the end of the game to save the day. Talk about the battle. I saw you guys going back and forth pretty hard. That was really a great matchup between you two. Yeah, uh, he played with DC Assault growing up. I played with Team Takeover, so I know him from the AAU days back in the day, so we just wanted to go at it. How big is this win for you guys? Uh, it's very big. It just shows you how relentless we are, you know. Um, we got a young group, uh, a lot of new guys in the starting lineup. We just showed you that if we put in the work every day in practice, listen to what the coach says, and go out there and perform, we can do anything. I know you're not 100%. You've been fighting through some stuff. How do you feel coming out of this game? Uh, I feel good. <laughs> I'm ready to play again. Uh, thanks, Jarris. <laughs> guys? What a gutty performance. Congratulations, Jarris. 18 points in 38 minutes. But he wasn't the only star. The Retrievers had seven guys in double figures. No, but it, but it was not the, the scoring that won this game. Obviously, they scored 89 points. But it was the, the guts at the end. They fell behind by six. Looked like they could easily lose. They came back. They got the lead. They lost the lead. And then they had to get that one stop. We talk all the time about getting one stop in a crucial moment. And they did a great job on the inbounds pass, denying the ball to Peters. Lyles deflects it, and by the time it got in Peters' hands, he was rushing. And because he was rushing, he took a quick shot, missed it, and who else gets the rebound but Jarris Lyles? He's like Bugs Bunny in that cartoon, and playing is, every position. And what does this do for their confidence moving forward? Well, it, it, it's great for their confidence in terms of winning a close game against a good team because they, they played very well against SMU in Arizona, but those were losses. So they get a good win against a good team. And you know what? Going to the weekend three and three feels a lot better than two and four. No doubt about it. Great games this afternoon, and John, great uh, action here. Thank you so much, and Paul Mittermeyer as well. That'll do it for the entire broadcast team. I'm Gary Stein. Our final score, UMBC 89, Nickel State 88. The next UMBC broadcast on ESPN3, Monday afternoon at noon, as the men host the Shenandoah Hornets. Uh, broadcast again is at noon. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN and the America East Conference. Have a great afternoon from Baltimore, Maryland.